I figure with this game being as special as it is between the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Giants that we might as well do one more check-in. Because you can never have enough information about your opponents going into a game. You want to be as prepared as you possibly can be. And this next guest that I'm bringing on, he is extremely well prepared for this game. And he he knows his stuff, certainly not only about the Giants, but about the Baltimore Ravens too. But without further ado, let's bring him in for the Giants and Ravens preview part two. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, very, very special guest in the building uh, to talk Ravens and Giants. Got my guy, Entertainer. Uh, first, before we get into it, let everybody know who you are and exactly what it is that you do and where they can find you. Yeah, man, really excited to be on the channel. Uh, you're, you know, you're definitely one of the, the the cooler guys I've seen, you know, scouring through YouTube. And we were, like I said, right before uh, we started this, I, I don't even remember what came up. But something came up. I think I was away. Um, we were supposed to do uh, something last time we met. So excited yeah, to be on. But that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. You can find me on uh, Entertainer Talk at Sports um, on YouTube, uh, Entertainer on Twitter, and uh, yeah, I talk Giants. That's what I talk. Uh, my teams, Knicks, Giants. Um, but yeah, just love talking football, love talking sports and, and trying to build a community similar to yours. Oh yeah, for sure. Now, um, just to get right into it, Giants sitting at four and one right now. How does that feel? Especially as a Giant fan and especially how things have uh, been recently. How, how does it feel sitting at that beautiful record? Dude, uh, we won four games all of last year. Um, oh. yeah, we won, we went four and 13 last year with judge. Obviously things fell apart in the second half. I think we were four mm. and seven before Danny went down and then we lost our last six games, but um, we were never trending anywhere near this. And you're starting to look as a Giants fan, you start to look at the playoff odds. And I think we're like 80% right now with a four and one start. And we're not used mm. to this. We haven't been, uh, we haven't been four and one since uh, 2010. And, you know, part of me is like still trying to like tell the fans, be calm. You know, we're ahead of schedule. It's possible things could revert back to what we expected going into the year. But at the same time, we've beaten some impressive teams. You're coming up one against the Packers. We beat the Titans week one mm-hmm. on the road. Brian Dable's first game as a head coach. Um, and this week is probably our biggest test. I mean, I, you guys are the Packers are probably our biggest test to date. And you can make an argument. This is our toughest out of division game all year. So um, especially traveling back from London. So we'll see if the Giants oh, are up yeah. for the test. I, f- I forgot that y'all were just in London for that Packers game. Yeah, that was, that was bright and early last Sunday, 930 in the morning. Yeah. I still um still getting used to that uh with, with NFL. Um but h- how as a as a Giants fan, how do you feel right now about the Eagles? Because they're sitting pretty right now too at five and zero. Yeah, just our division in general. The Cowboys look better than I yeah, thought they were. They so, one too, yeah. Um Cowboys going into the year, I really thought that their defense would come back a little bit to the pack because last year they led the league in turnovers created. Mm-hmm. But they've been able to – to me now, they're like a legitimate like high-end defense, which I didn't see going into the year. So they're legit. And when they get Dak back, they're only going to get better. I think you can make an argument that they may even be better than the Eagles, even though the Eagles are the uh, the lone unbeaten team right now in the NFL. But the Eagles are really good. I picked the Eagles mm-hmm. to win the division before the year started. I think I had them at 12 wins. And um, they play a soft schedule too, probably even softer than ours. So mm-hmm. they're, they're going to stay there. They're, they might get the one seed in the NFC because when you look at their schedule, I can't – as much as I hate the Eagles – I can't pick out that many losses, you know, and they're really strong on, you know, where it matters most on the offensive and defensive line. So Mm -hmm. they're going to be a throw on our side all year. And I just, you know, as a Giants fan, obviously I'd like to win the division, but realistically Mm -hmm. speaking, if we make the playoffs, I'll be over the moon. Oh yeah, for sure. And going from the Eagles to a different bird, uh, these Baltimore (laughs) Ravens, Um, this is a, uh, yeah, a big game really for both teams. Um, Ravens have been, up and down, up and down, up and down. Because uh, one in week one, lost week two. One in week three, lost week four. One in week five, so it's been back and forth. Um, and w- about the offense, with, with Ravens offense, the second half has uh, brought a lot of struggles because the Ravens have just the, – the offense to start the game off, they've been good, but to finish it off, it, it's gotten really slow. 
As far as the Giants, um, what are some things that they do uh, offensively to create problems? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, the offense is much different than it was last year, but obviously, you know, it starts with Saquon. It starts with the running mm -hmm. game. It starts with the offensive line. Um, but one thing, you know, as a Ravens fan that you want to be looking out, uh, something that we've sprinkled into the offense the last couple of weeks has been the Wildcat. We've used that a bit more, oh, really? um, especially if we get Wondell Robinson back this week. I think it makes it even more dangerous because he's kind of a guy that could motion over the front of Saquon Barkley, the option to pitch it to him off the end. But, yeah, we used the Wildcat maybe five or six times last week, and we started to sprinkle it into the offense, and it was effective. But it would have been even more effective had we not been called for, I think, two illegal motion penalties on two of the plays. But, yeah, definitely look out for that. Um, obviously, Daniel Jones's legs. I mean, he had 37 yards rushing last week. He had about 70 the week before, even though he only played mm -hmm. three quarters. So with the extra attention that Saquon Barkley's garnering due to the, you know, because he's been so success successful running the football, which I would only expect your Ravens defense to try to do the same thing, stack the box. He's our best weapon. It's allowed Daniel Jones to flourish in the running game as well. We're obviously still limited in terms of the wide receiver play, um, but Slayton looked good last week. So hopefully he starts to turn it around. And sticking with the offense, um, what are some weaknesses uh, that the Giants may have on offense right now? Offensive line, I, I still think is a weakness. It, it was our best game we've pl played all all year last year in terms of the pass protection mm -hmm. um, against the Green Bay Packers for sure. But I still think it's a weakness. Um, we got a rookie right tackle in Evan Neal. So you saw Dallas really pick on him. Tank Lawrence had three sacks against him, I think, in the first half. So I would expect your Ravens to probably try to take advantage of that. And the Giants probably not to have too many pass attempts knowing that, you know, that's still a weakness. And our, and our interior, the run blocking on our line is actually very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would definitely say our biggest weakness offensively is going to be pass protection, uh, especially going up against an aggressive defense like yours. So, yeah, I would expect you guys to try to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And that's funny because for the Ravens offensive line, it's been completely flipped. Where the run blocking has been so-so, but the pass blocking has been better uh, than the run blocking. And you would expect for a Ravens team who's known to run the football uh, that the run blocking would be better, but it, it just hasn't been overall this season. So hopefully it continues. Um, but – this game is a game that features a lot of familiar faces yes. for the Baltimore Ravens. We got Jihad Ward, um, Tony Jefferson, a safety. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest familiar face that's uh, been garnering all the attention this week has been Wink. Um, and I've been hearing a lot of good things about Wink from a lot of different people. Um, spoke to the Hub and Kid Blue uh, a couple of days ago. They ra ranted and raved about him. But how you feeling about Don Martin deal right now as Giants defensive coordinator? Yeah, uh, you, yeah, you hit that on the head. I think that's by far the biggest storyline going into this game and, and mm -hmm. how Wink is going to go up against Lamar Jackson. They know each other very well, obviously. Yeah. Wink practiced against him for four years as the defensive coordinator, was your linebacker mm -hmm. coach before that. Um, and I don't know who gets the edge there. Does Lamar get the edge because he's accustomed to playing against that kind of defense? Or does Wink get the edge because he knows the tendencies that Lamar brings to the table? So I'm really excited to see, um, you know, how it all plays out. But so far, so good with Wink. Uh, I know he struggled last year with you guys, obviously, and that's why you moved on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, your defense, I think, has been struggling a bit, but you had some injuries in that secondary. And from what I've read, you guys are starting to get back to where you want to be right. uh, defensively. But I know Wink struggled last year when you had an injuries in your secondary because the blitzing didn't quite live up to the way it did his first three years mm -hmm. there as a DC. And I know Harbaugh had some kind of connections. I think your current defense coordinator was um, his uh, his brother, John, I think, in uh, college. He was his defense Michigan. coordinator. Right. Mm -hmm. And he brought him to you guys. So hopefully that works out for you guys long term. Not this week, though. But <laughs> as far as Wink goes, man, yeah. I mean, so far he's brought a lot of great things to the New York Giants defense. I mean, I think right now we're sixth in the league. Um, in terms of third down defense, only 30% of the time we're blitzing more than anybody in the league, which I expected. And it's been yeah. successful. Um, we've had a ton of injuries all over that defense. Leonard Williams, you could argue is our best defensive player. He's missed three and a half games. Hopefully he's back this week. Um, old Jalari's missed a ton of time. Kayvon missed two weeks, but he still found ways to create pressure. Um, we still don't have an interception. Hopefully we get that this week, but overall wings done a great job and it's been the adjustments at halftime this past week against the mm. Packers. He held Aaron Rodgers scoreless in the first uh, – second half, rather, after we look lost defensively in the first half. So you've really noticed that as Giants fans, on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, the adjustments this coaching staff's been able to make from within the game. Mm. Now, um, with Wink, you talked about the blitz and you talked about how uh, good the pass rush has been. Um, and that's something that the uh, the Ravens under Wink and under 
their last two defensive coordinators, really, but certainly under Wink, uh, they struggled uh, with the pass rush. Um, but how who who are those pass rushes that Ravens fans should look out for? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to assume Old is probably not going to play in this game. Uh, we'll mm. see, but I'm going to assume he's probably not. But obviously, Kayvon Thibodeau, that's the guy you want to look out for, for sure. He's the big name that we drafted. Dexter Lawrence needs to get a lot more notice throughout the NFL. Um, and it, and I, I do think Leonard Williams is trending towards playing this week. So those are the three guys on defense. You're familiar with Jihad Ward. He's played well for the Giants thus far. Mm-hmm. Shane Zimmon is another guy that stepped up when given the opportunity. But Kayvon is starting to get there. Um, you know, the first couple of weeks that he played, specifically the first week, he looked kind of lost. There were a couple of plays where it was pretty obvious. He didn't even know that, you know, the, the, the play call. He was kind of like he had his hands up in the air at times. So he was getting adjusted to the NFL. But last week, um, he was getting a ton of pressure, and I think he's got eight or nine pressures over the last two weeks. Doesn't have a sack yet, but he's definitely starting to be a guy that's, you know, causing some disruption. So potentially he could do, a, you know, do some damage against you guys. But Dexter Lawrence is definitely the main guy. I mean, he had eight pressures in one game two weeks ago with two sacks. Mm-hmm. This past week he had the play of the game against the Packers. So he's been a different player under uh, Dexter Lawrence on the interior. Okay, okay. And, and switching back to the offensive side of the ball, for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, number eight, um, he has been in MVP talks. Um, he's uh, just continued to take his game to another level this season. Uh, but the Giants, they have their own number eight uh, in Daniel Jones. How, how has he been overall this year for the New York Giants? Yeah, I'll tell you about your number eight, man. He scared me. We played you guys two years ago and he destroyed us. So, you know, we're definitely I'm, – I'm definitely excited but nervous to see what Wink does against him. But as far as Daniel Jones goes um, – I think a a huge problem with Daniel Jones, and I don't think Daniel Jones is an elite quarterback. I've never thought that, but I definitely Mm -hmm. think he could be a much better quarterback than what we've seen. And I think he was always set up for failure. He's always, he's been, this is now his third different scheme in four years. And now you're starting Mm -hmm. to see him get good play callers, get guys that can get the most out of their, their offensive and defensive players. And you've seen him flourish because of it. If you don't watch the giant games, you just look at the stats. You're like, wow, how good has Daniel Jones been? But Mm -hmm. when you look at it from the context of each individual game, he's gotten progressively better week in and week out. And he's not losing the football game for us anymore. He has two turnover, two interceptions. One came on a, a dropped route by David Sills. He fell to the ground. So I don't even put that on Daniel Jones. The other one was week one um, where he did make a really bad throw to Saquon Barkley. But outside of that, he hasn't had any turnover worthy plays. And yeah, I know he does. I realize he hasn't thrown a lot of touchdowns. I think he only has three, he has two or three rushing touchdowns as well, mm-hmm. but he's He's moving the chains. He's, he's coming up with huge third down conversions. This past week, going up against the Green Bay Packers, going into that game, the Packers had the best third down defense in the National Football League. Only 23% of the time their opponents were converting on third down. The Giants converted six out of 10. Two of them were with Daniel Jones's legs, who has 21 first downs with his legs this year, which I think is only behind Lamar Jackson all time or Michael Vick. I don't remember which quarterback it was um, through five weeks in the season. So he's done a lot of damage with his legs. And, uh, yeah, he, situational football, he's been great. He's got three game-winning drives. Um, so he's definitely maturing as a quarterback. Okay, sounds good. So after talking about the offense and, and defense, um, this is a, a huge game, obviously. Both yep. teams are going up against uh, some fierce competition. How do you think – and you can't – you could can give a prediction if you want to. You don't have to, but no pressure. Um, <laughs> how do you think this game is going to go? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I, I was asked before the year started which game scares you the most, and it was this one. Um, I think that there were and, – and I didn't think as highly as my Giants before the year started as I do now, obviously. Right. I didn't think we'd be 4-1. and one. Mm. But going into the year, this game scared me the most because I didn't – I don't know if I thought you guys were the toughest team on our schedule. You were among the toughest. But factoring and also that we're traveling back from London, I said before the year started, if we're going to get blown out in one game, this was going to be the one – but obviously right now I got confidence in my Giants, the way that they're playing. They seem to be able to overcome injuries. So I think it's going to be a competitive game. Um, and, and I have faith that our coaching staff is going to keep us close from within this game. But all that being said, um, and, and I hope I'm wrong, I'm going to pick you guys. But I think it's going to be close. I, I think it'll be probably like a 24-20 type game. I think the Giants will keep this game close. I think the spread's right around five points. So that's about what Vegas sees it at as well. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants win. I really wouldn't. But – um, I got respect for your Baltimore, uh, Baltimore Ravens. That I, I think what this game is going to come down to is what you guys do best and what the Giants are starting to get better at, if we have any chance. It's mm-hmm. the time of possession. Um, mm-hmm. You look back at what Baltimore's been able to do the three previous years before this year started. They're kind of middle of the pack right now. they got to get better in that area. 
you guys were first, first, and third in time of possession, I think, the, the three previous years. And that's something that the Giants are getting better at because of their running attack. I think right now we're 11th in the league, um, which we were nowhere – no, 6th in the league, actually. We were 11th before last week. Now I think we're 6th. We, we were nowhere near that in prior years. you got to go back like 15 years uh, where we were ranked that high. So I think if the Giants are going to have a chance in this game – they gotta, they gotta at least break even or get close to even in terms of the time of possession. Because if you guys wear us down the way that your offense is able to do because of Lamar Jackson's legs and your running ability, the defense is gonna tire out over the course of the game. So the Giants have to do a good job in terms of possessing the football. All right, so I appreciate it. But one last question before we get out of here: How do you do all that streaming? <laughs> I couldn't do it because you, you you do a lot of live streaming. I can only do it like once, maybe twice yeah, a week. Yeah. But I used to do it a lot more. I, I've scaled back a bit now. I you know now I just do the you know one or two weekly live shows. I do the live I do the Giants games. I mix in the Knicks. It's harder than some people may realize, right? Yeah. Like well, you know, you're a YouTuber, but um, it, it's harder than some people may realize to do that much streaming. But yeah, I've kind of scaled back a bit. Especially mm -hmm. now, because now I have a regular nine to five on top of it. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, I, sometimes I question myself. I don't know how I do it. I'm crazy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, I, I appreciate you coming on. And one more time before we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, man, find me at the uh, Entertainer Talk at Sports. Come on by, talk some smack after you know if your Ravens win. If you lose, I expect you to come by too and give us some yeah, props, man. For but, sure. Um, again, man, thank you so much for uh, having me on. And, yeah, look forward to uh, talking with you in the future. And, and good luck to your Ravens after this. Week. Oh, yeah, appreciate you. You already know. So um, all the links to his uh, YouTube channel and his Twitter, everything will be down below in the description. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. And we out. The Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Shout out to Graven.